It is Emily here from That Crazy Thing Called Love and you have joined me on my 12 Days of Christmas interview series and today I'm here with the lovely Mel. Mel, thank you very much for being here today. This conversation is going to get really, really interesting. I can feel it already. Mel, tell the viewers a little bit about what it is that you do. Uh, in a nutshell, the business card says I'm a dating coach for men. So that's it. In a nutshell, really simple. It's more around how I do that than most people then go, what does that mean? And not many people come across dating coaches, particularly the opposite sex. So yeah, I kind of start a new question every time I have a conversation. That's awesome. What a great place to be in. Um, and yeah. this is why I'm really, really excited about today's interview is that when Mel and I found each other, there was almost like, oh, this wonderful synergy instantly happened. What Mel is doing for men, I am doing for women and vice versa. And it is, it's been such a pleasure to connect with you. And thank you very much for being here today. So the burning question on my lips, Mel, seeing as you speak to as many men as I speak to women, and I know what women want, Tell the women at home a little bit about what it is, the, the thing that men want in a woman. In a woman or for all women, I think at a, not, at a core level, every man truly is seeking a connection. And if you, if you look at the basic concept that humans, male or female, are pack creatures, we're meant to live in communities, we constantly seek connection. Um, it's it's a constant it doesn't matter who I ask when you get deep enough even if they're in denial about what kind of relationship they're looking for whether it's a committed or long term or the truth is they're seeking connection mm. at a at an innate deep heart level mm. so yeah yeah awesome and in terms of the actual dating experience and attraction what could Obviously, a connection starts with attraction. So what is it do you think that men are looking for out there in the women of today? Well, <laughs> I don't think you know this, but I've written a book um, which answers that question, what do women really want? And I'd actually like your professional opinion on it to see whether it aligns with what you coach. Um, so to unpack what men want for themselves, if I may, can I go about it answering it that Absolutely. way? Um, and this isn't just my philosophy. This is um, scientifically proven and it's uh, a thought and um, um, approach used by many coaches in this male masculine space. And that is men primarily, innately, historically, prehistorically seek status. Yeah. And that status can mean different things to different men. And that's why I guess as coaches, we come in and help them understand where that status is missing for them. The second thing that men want is, um, uh, uh, or are driven by, is probably a better way of describing it, is um, the status, the um, the the alphaness, the um, the physicality. So men seek to be physically strong and fit and healthy, because again of that conditioning of the virality means they can carry on and procreate and, and their genes are will continue um so those driving forces at a, a brain level a neurological level is what's driving them mm -hmm. what they're seeking at a heart level is the right woman who can fit into whatever those interpretations in the modern day for them is so for one status can simply mean career position um and how they are um, viewed amongst their peers. Another one is status in the family, um, where they fit into their hierarchy within their own family unit. Um, and other people, how they fit in with their, um, uh, their mates and their um, groups. Again, that comes back to those prehistoric days of the pack. Um, so that's kind of what drives men. And when we, we as women can understand that, it makes it easier to, one, I guess, put ourselves in their shoes and then what, what is this thing going on? What's this man cave all about? Why do they feel the need to disappear into the loo for 20 minutes at the end of the day? What is it that's driving those things that can frustrate us? And we're like, I'm seeking quality time as soon as you come home from the office or the workplace, mine's actually a tradie. And it's like, I just want to see you. I've been yeah. looking forward to seeing you tonight. And then you disappear into the back cave for... And it's we instantly spiral into rejection. 
That's it. Yes. Been rejected. Yeah. She love me enough. Instant. Yeah. Mm. So understanding that that's that's what it's all about for me is helping men understand what women are thinking being a woman i can speak on behalf of women mm. um so that's that's where i found an easy way to translate why women are doing what we're doing in a way that men understand i've always had this ability to connect with men um on an articulate level mm. and kind of i guess kind of cut them some slack and say do you realize what's happening um, in your head and why this is translating and I mean I could just go on for examples forever and you know but maybe I'll let you ask another question <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure if I've answered your question what your question was how we um I don't even remember what the question was but whatever you just said was awesome I know that <laughs> actually it was what women want yeah um, and so if I may um, women women I believe are seeking um, it's difficult because we come in a world where we're more evolved in what we can achieve ourselves. Mm. The equality is more level. Mm -hmm. It's still not where it needs to be. Don't get me wrong, but um, we're kind of relying on men for different things now. So what yeah. women want, it depends on their career, wh where their, their comfort is within their own security and um, career and stability, I think is something that's really important for women. Yeah. So I guess I'll cut that short there for you, but I think that's what women are looking for. Um, my book goes into it that kind of breaks down the top 12 traits that women seek. And I did that from a whole raft. I think there was about 24 um, pieces of research. I'm quite um, science-based, which is another reason why I resonate with men. Mm. Um, and I consolidated my spreadsheet is like crazy. Thank goodness for my corporate days. Um, so I broke all the results of those um, reports and um, research and I kind of came up with a list and I've had some people say I disagree that you know honesty should be further up the list or whatever and it's like this is what the research says yeah yeah so research can be wrong it can be skewed but innately what I it's a word I use a lot innately this is what we're conditioned with and sometimes we're not conscious aware of what we are innately doing or thinking or feeling mm. and I think a really important message and certainly one that I speak about a lot is in order to have a man who is stable and reliable and for him to be able to provide that for us we've got to give him the space in turn to be the man in the relationship and I think that's where you and I sparked really well was that when we were both like yes of course, women can do anything. We can, we really can. And, and I, I, I agree with you. I know that there is still a way to go, but we have achieved great civil and political equality in recent years. And it's phenomenal in that there has been a slight emasculation of man. And I think you see that as well as me. Big wide eyes, big nods completely. Um, if, may I respond? Of course, please do. Um, so people ask sometimes about what I stand for, my principles and philosophies of, of what Dating with Kismet's about. And that is overarching everything, literally is the banner across everything I do is mindset um, and how we approach things and how we can, as I say, put ourselves in other people's shoes. So how, how we see different perceptions and perspectives. But underarching everything is emasculation that's what i believe is men are doing it to men but quite often and i say this because i did it um women emasculate men mm. and we don't realize we're doing it and i remember using words and phrases like well he needs to step up a man who can't approach me um is not strong enough for me if he can you know get over his fear by the way ladies men have a pathological fear of rejection mm. when i started to understand that i i cut them some slack i went a little bit easy but i would use phrases like well step up if you ain't you ain't mm. ballsy enough to approach me then you don't get the prize sort of thing and after i started doing the research so i i became a coach basically in my single years and started really study the difference between men and women and Boy, did everything turn when I started to have that kind of, I guess, that compassion for them and seeing why, how hard it is for a man to approach a woman that he's attracted to. 
yeah that's the thing that we don't realize they become frozen by the fear of looking like an idiot of course every we are all programmed for reject, to fear rejection it's it was a life-threatening thing the saber tooth tiger would come and wipe you out yeah. you were just wandering around all by yourself because you had no mates so yes. you know, it's so hardwired into us i always say and i always encourage my clients to have the a graceful way to approach a guy and be the first person to make that move without looking like you're hunting him down and sort of glancing at him from across the bar and beelining for him with all your masculine dominant energy. It's, it's a very graceful, elegant way that you can approach a guy without emasculating him and then allowing him to take charge of that conversation, maybe then to lead the conversation on, you know, once you've actually made the first move. I think, yeah, they're out with the book that the man has to be the person that initiates conversation. It's interesting that in, in reversal, I, I would say look for the openings. Women, uh, the nice women, the compassionate ones, will give you openings to make the approach. You've got to see that opening and then step, it, step into your masculinity Absolutely. and kind of take the next step. Because you, we, women want to be chased. Men want to do the chasing. That's proven in science as well. But it's how we do that initial spark engagement connection eyes contact whatever it might be that's what you and i i think are teaching the same thing to both sexes and it's like so it should be easy and i, I it's happened time and time again i'm sure you've got results where you like see mm. just do this see it that way and uh, and women's like i i remember speaking if i can give an example i was in um i played wing girl um that's one of the services i offer to my clients um so i go along as as a friend with a client and there was this time, one time where a guy said, oh, I like this lady. She's, you know, blah, 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 describe her. So I went for a little scout to see who she was. And, um, right, okay, got it. Yeah, I think she could be somebody, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, long story, after an hour and a half, he still couldn't approach her. And I said, would you like me to find out whether she's at least single? Do you want me to just do a little recon for you, but not lay the foundation? So he's like, yeah, that would be cool. So... I kind of went over and started a conversation. I, can't, I think I complimented her in some way and um, opened a conversation. And I just said, oh, I'm just wondering if you're single. You seem really nice and friendly. And her friend interrupted and, and said, are you, are you chatting my girlfriend up for a guy? And I went, no, I just came over to pay a compliment to you. I'm just passing her, um, paying a compliment. And I'm just wondering if she's single because I have a male friend and he happens to be single. I'm just wondering. And, and she went, well, she is, but if he's not ballsy enough to find out for himself, then no, nah, she's not interested. And I went, oh, I was having a conversation with your friend. I was asking her if she was single, but I didn't realize this was the dynamic of your friendship. All right, that's cool. And I just walked away. Mm. I just thought, the poor bugger, I'm not sending him into the lines then. <laughs> friend was he was the lesser attractive yeah and clearly used to the more attractive being approached all the time and was just shooting down and sabotaging on behalf of a friend but a friend actually approached me separately another time and said i i'd like to know more interesting yeah Sometimes be careful who you hang with other people around mm. you really genuinely have your best interest at heart yeah it's it was it's a very important lesson to learn yes really is. all right sorry i've jumped on your uh, question so no, what would you no, like? no, no. It's, it's, <laughs> it's been awesome i want to hear all of your stories basically and you and i could probably talk for the next four or five days but i think we'll probably have to wrap it up this time here but look forward to some more stuff um from mel in the new year because I'm all over this lady. I love her. I think what she's doing is absolutely awesome. And, and uh, we, we speak the same message. So I'm really excited about doing more stuff with you in 2017. Have an awesome 2016. Happy New Year to all of your fans, followers, and readers. And, and the same uh, to you. And if you'd like to find out any more about Mel, you can do so by clicking in all of the links below. Get on her book. You did actually send me a copy, and I am going to be reading it. There it is. The very one. <laughs> I will be reading it very soon. Mel, thank you ever so much and happy Christmas. No worries. Thank you. Bye.